Oh, Martin, let's go ahead and get into some motion pictures. People, if this is your first time watching the show, you're going to get a hint, a little bit of a preview of another show that we do called The Movie Review Extravaganza. Ganza, 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 Ganza. Ganza, Ganza. He's, he's more lively when we actually do the show. He has to save it for that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that now. No, no, man, and you shouldn't. Good. So don't give that shit away. Let people watch it on the proper show. Yeah, exactly. Let them earn it. But, Martin, there's a, you know, sometimes, though, sometimes, people, there are movies that, are, that they, they will come out and we're not given a preview of them. Or they make it hard for us to go see them. They, this movie that we're about to talk about, the, When the Bow Breaks, that didn't even open up in Austin. They, in fact, they wanted to make sure nobody saw it because the places that they did open it up on a Thursday were towns with no black people. And this is a black movie. Oh, like Bastrop? Bastrop and, and Georgetown. Jesus. Yeah, they, I can tell you, that theater was empty that night. <laughs> so we had to make up for it, at least I did, because a lot of people say, man, talk about the shit. And it didn't do bad this weekend. No. So, you know, in order to be uh, thorough here, I went ahead and uh, saw the movie myself. I actually paid. No, I did not pay. Oh, you didn't? No, man, those regal, those regal points work. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to see about 50 shitty movies before you get a free movie. <laughs> but do. but today they told me, they're like, hey, do you, uh, would you like a free ticket or would you like to pay for this? I ain't paying for this shit. <laughs> right. You better give me a free, why you even ask me that? I, I love that when they say like, oh, you have a, a free uh, free popcorn or a free movie ticket. Would you like to redeem that? He's like, you goddamn right I would. Yeah. What the hell else would what I save it for? <laughs> nah, I, don't even get, I don't even get the food. You ain't give me no shitty food. You give me a movie, goddamn it, because I know one day I'm about to go see a piece of shit and I don't want to go pay for it. Like today, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you the rating just yet. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe that's just a diversion. But Martin, Black Thrillers. You ever heard of them Black Thrillers, Martin? Uh, yeah. Martin, like they, the perfect guy. The per- yeah. <laughs> Martin. And what was, what was the one with Idris Elba? See, that's the thing. Screen Gems, they making a... Obsessed? They are making, they are making a... Screen Gems is making a, a, a pretty much a, a genre out of thrillers featuring black people. Idris Elba was in one about two, three years ago, No Good Deed, with Taraji P. Henson. Oh, I was talking about the one with him and Beyonce. Oh, yeah, well, that, the, the, the white chick was the villain in there, so we're not going to really count that oh, one. okay. We're talking okay. about the ones where black people go crazy and turn on each other. Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like they're doing here. Black thrillers. <laughs> and and the, the, we had one out, uh, man, it seemed like just yesterday I saw this movie, uh, The Perfect Guy with Michael Ealy and Morris Chestnut. And I forgot who the chick was in there. <laughs> the look on Morris Chestnut's face is priceless. Yeah. You believe this shit? Yeah. <laughs> Got me in this motherfucking movie right here. Because you know that's how black people talk. <laughs> Got me in this goddamn motherfucking movie. Got well, he must. Series on Fox. Who is, uh, who's uh, the, the girl? Uh, Sanaa Latham. Sanaa Latham, yes. Well, Martin, it must have not been that bad of an experience for him because Morris Chestnut is back. And he pr- actually produced this one. When the Bow Breaks, Martin. And. This right here, we're dealing with. We're de- see, this is a cool thing. I can say one cool thing about this movie: they show black people being professionals. That's and you know, they, yeah. They, you know, they, my man right here, Morris Chestnut, Chestnut. He plays John Tyler. He's a up and coming lawyer in the firm, about to make partner. His wife, played by Regina Hall, Laura Taylor. She's about to be this the next big chef out there. She's rising in the ranks. But the only thing that's missing, Martin, they ain't got no kids. I mean, she's had so many miscarriages now. And Martin, here's the deal, buddy. Stay down to that one last good embryo. <laughs> they, got, they, ain't got, they can't waste no more, Martin. They got to get this one right. So they decide to go out on a limb and have a surrogate mother give birth to their first child and probably only child. And that comes in the form of a young girl named Anna, played by Jazz Sinclair. Oh and no, Anna! <laughs> Anna, she you can't see the look on her face and tell what's wrong with yeah, this man. T- <laughs> Marge looking at the trailer for those who are listening. Man, the trailer tells you every fucking thing you need to know. I'm telling you, I mean, unless you just, unless you like my mama, you just go see everything that's black because you were denied back in civil rights days or something. You know, <laughs> then then that that they go see it. But the trailer kind of tells you everything, which is look. I'm not spoiling anything. Uh, it's not long before they realize Anna's fucking crazy. Yeah, and she has an obsession for John, and she and you know, and at first she's kind of cool, but then she's like, wait a minute, this motherfucker, I'm carrying his baby. We should be together. <laughs> And get his old ragged ass wife out the picture. It's so funny how this is, you know, the hand that rocks the cradle and when the bow breaks. 
and that movie, The Hand That Walked Rocks the Cradle, was about the babysitter who was yep. obsessed with the husband and wanted to yep. kill the wife. <laughs> that's what, man, that's exactly. Hey, Martin, it's that same movie except dipped in chocolate. <laughs> it's the same shit. I'm telling you, kind of. It's also some other things. It's, uh, it's sort of fatal attraction, too, which The Hand That Rocks the Cradle was fatal attraction. Right. Except with a babysitter going yeah. crazy. They were making a lot of those kind of movies at that time. Yeah, yeah. This is the one where we had... Suburban thrillers. Yeah, suburban thrillers. Y'all remember this. This is where we had Glenn Close who was being uh, interrogated by, the, by Batman right now. <laughs> she looked straight up joking that shit right yeah. there. That's what I'm thinking when uh, Michael Douglas was in that movie. Like, you knew she was fucking crazy. No, nah, man. That's the thing about that movie is she, she comes off <laughs> in the beginning not crazy at all. <laughs> really? She don't look like that? No, no. Hi, she's Michael. Like, she's just like an independent woman who wants to have sex and she's like, look, I know you're married. Let's, let's, let's just have a fling. And she says, to him you can be discreet can't you and he's like well yeah i mean if you ask him, that must mean that you can okay. be discreet all right see martin I just, i'm just used to talking to crazy girls like that <laughs> you know no no she flips later and you're like what the fuck why didn't you tell me you were crazy when we started this yeah that's the kind of shit i look for in the bar i used to ask girls hey are you crazy yes i am <laughs> and let's like, go oh, good <laughs> yeah <laughs> by oh, your drink check <laughs> <laughs> but martin that's the thing about this too you know it's the same thing here she starts out unassuming. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, she she's not. <laughs> let me let me you know. Let me just let me let me just tell y'all something right now. Let me just tell y'all something. Fuck fuck this film, okay? You know, they, I'm, I'm the, the reason why I say this is because look, it's why I tell people don't go to film school. Don't waste your money on film school because this bullshit right here, is bullshit right. Here. It is it is some shit that it, that. If you wrote this shit in a film class, you would get an F and the professor would physically throw your ass out. He'd give you an F or fuck you and toss you through a window. He'd take you up to the fucking tower and throw your ass off. <laughs> this shit is written that bad. This, this is some amateurish shit right here. Do not go to art school. Write some shit in crayon and put, put, send it to a studio and they'll make it if they think they can make money. If you want to do some art shit and be broke, go ahead. But, you know, write, write some garbage. Apparently it sells. Because this shit, because that's what this is. This is Fatal Attraction written by an 18-year-old. Damn. It's Fatal Attraction, attraction written by an 18-year-old who saw the movie, loved it, and thought, you know what? I'm going to write my own version of it. Oh, except this one, you know, this one has a surrogate mother and black people in it. That's how mine is different. Mm-hmm. You know, people, this is, this is some amateurish shit right here. If you can't tell what my rating is going to right now. You know? <laughs> I think you said it already. <laughs> you might as well have wrote this script. Because, look, this shit is stupid. I mean, look, one of the things, one of the things that, they, uh, that they do with this is that they have uh, – they, they, it's, it's, it's so amateurishly thin because the characters have no dimension at all. These characters are written – these characters fill up half a page with that, you know, with the uh, with with as as much as they do in this movie right here. They they are so flat. Yeah. They they got one note. They are there to be that person, and and sometimes you know they're two flat characters in one, like uh, the character of Anna right there. Anna, the way they start out with her, they they make her like they, of course she's the femme fatale in this movie, so they have to make her seem you know the big twist uh, is that you don't see it coming because she's so nice. Yeah. They got her so childlike that she's she's mentally challenged, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, she in the movie she's she she's she's like a little she's like a cleaning woman or something. Yeah, no, it's okay. No, <laughs> she, you know, she's so meek. She got the she got her shoulders hunched over through the whole the, through the, through the first uh, quarter of the film. Uh huh. You know everything she's saying. She's like she's acting so shy, and <clears throat> it gets to a point where you know what? Even if you didn't know going in what this was about she would be they would be trying to make her seem so innocent you'd be like oh of course she's the one that's gonna go fucking crazy sure i mean why else would she be acting this way now you are doing this incredible thing for us it's the least we can do let us do something nice for you okay 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 you know (laughs) you know (laughs) They try to make us so nice that she even she even forces a squint in her eyes. She's, right. Whenever she's smiling, when she's supposed to be innocent, she looks a little like a little old Asian woman. <laughs> you know, it's, it's and she's always walking around like she got a stick in her ass, got a hunch in her back and shit. She's all meek and humble, but once she's in, once she just just adds some watermark and she and she feet after midnight and she your feet after midnight, she turns to a sex ass gremlin. Once she gets in, she don't waste no time. We're talking some nutty professor shit, man. Oh really? Where some, like <laughs> she's buddy love. Like yeah, she's the, the she's a female buddy love. Like some shit just changes changes in her physically. Like that wasn't there before. Like how is that even possible? Like um, once Did it she change actresses. Once, I mean, it's almost like that. Once she changes, to, once she gets hot. 
Like she she grows out that sexy fro right there. Her clothes are tighter. Her clothes go higher up her ass. You know, her titties just popped out of nowhere. Ass got bigger. It's like what the <laughs> fuck? What formula? Yeah, yeah. It's like what formula did you fucking drink? <laughs> I mean, this is the shit. To, it's like she's a whole other person that came out of nowhere, man. And she wants some dick. <laughs> she wants some dick so bad. Some or a specific dick. She wants. She wants more as chestnut. He's, he's he's out there at night trying to fix some shit. <laughs> At night, what's at, at night? Man, it's, it is something that could have waited till the morning. This man knew what he was doing. It's, it just so happens that there is this drain next to her window, and it's keep making a little bit of noise. And he's in the middle of the night, he's like, "Oh, I guess I should go fix that." Man, Nobody does that. No, well, if you want to see some titty, you are. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's out there by her window looking in, and she knows that he's. Look, you know, dudes, dudes are weak. You know that. <laughs> yeah. In fact, she made that drain make that fucking noise. She did this. She's like, I'm going to lure this bitch out here. And when he gets out there, of course, she waits for him. She planned the whole shit out. She waited for him to go out there and play handyman. And while he's out there getting soaking wet, she's looking in the mirror like, oh, I didn't see you there. Wow. Hey, girls. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I love it. He's, he's outside with the drain in the rain at night. In the rain, because he knew some shit was going to happen. He tried to play ignorant. She knew exactly what she was doing. But he's trying to be like, oh, I, I got to fix that drain right now. Oh, it, it might disturb my wife in the middle of the night. You're like, yeah, see something you like? Uh, can't pull out now. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> Oh, 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 what? He's disturbed. <laughs> now, you know they cut the scene out. He was in the bathroom just jacking off. <laughs> I, I didn't do nothing. He laid it like, can't unsee it. Yeah, he, he tried to convince himself. I, I didn't do anything. I, I didn't touch nothing. He going whisper, he gonna whisper, he gonna whisper in his wife's head, oh, hey, baby, I, I didn't fuck nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Good. <laughs> that girl's a liar. You know, he got back in bed. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> Negro, you guilty. <laughs> you have to fix that drain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I didn't cheat. All right. Look, it's not cheating. <laughs> but... She and she is so fucking horny that you know they gotta they even gotta go out the way with that. The moment like the, the moment that hair comes out uh -huh. and then the shorts start riding up her ass, she's all on the floor listening to albums, squirming. She's on the couch. She's on the bed trying on their clothes, rubbing her legs together. She's like a cat in heat. And she <laughs> and they uh you know and that's the thing about this man. I mean this shit. Right, is, well, pregnancy would make her boobs grow bigger. And, and mess with her hormones. That, that, no, and they try to use that as an excuse in the movie. Okay. They try to say, you know, that she's, uh, uh, you know, she's, she, she's just pregnant. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. And the thing they say, also Regina Hall, because she knows she, she know this girl is bad news, but that's what she said. I th she even says, I think she got a thing for you. Oh, but she just hormones going crazy. She's kind of cute. I mean, don't know, don't know no, woman let no 21-year-old no. girl with shorts, booty shorts right up her ass hang around her husband. Everything is possible, but there's no way a black woman would say that. Uh, maybe, maybe some women, but ain't, ain't one black woman on this earth. Not, would say that, yeah, uh, some, some young girl has a, oh, I think she has a thing for you. It wouldn't end with just that, like, oh, it's so cute. Hell no. No, hell no. Hell no, especially you, in, in, in the movie, you can kind of tell right now that the movie's going along a very predictable trail right now. And, of course, with that, I mean, but she's coming in and catching them with shit. And she still, oh, it's okay. You say she, you know, they gotta have these those moments in the movie where uh, Anna is all up on, she's all up on Morris Chestnut, uh -huh, and get the eyes locked, and then Regina Hall walks in, and, and like, I, oh, 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 yeah, oh. All, all of a sudden, oh, would you believe it? My business trip got cut short. I thought I'd surprise you. Why Regina Hall sounds like a slave? I don't know. <laughs> Anna. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, man, Anna's fine as fuck. I ain't gonna say nothing, man. Morris Chestnut is a good man. Man, she would have broke my ass down. I would have broke that window that night. I was on that fucking drain. <laughs> Morris Chestnut is a go great man. Through, yeah, yeah, I would move that ladder so I just go falling through. Oh, well, while I'm here. Hello. Mm. 
Yeah. Hey. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are you? Everything is fine. Mm, welcome home. Why hand it to me? It's good to be back. You like, we, we were fucking. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about it. A dude, you know a dude's thinking shit because he didn't do a goddamn thing. But a dude will front himself out even when he's innocent, man. That guilty ass look on his face. Oh, yeah. Sitting up there, he ain't done a goddamn thing. Look at me like, I ain't fucking nobody. Yeah, if you walked in and a dude had that look on his face, you'd be like, what have you done? Yeah, what did you do? Yeah, you know, I don't do nothing. Now with that goddamn look on your face, you didn't. <laughs> look at this shit. Uh, how was your trip, man? <laughs> Fine, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> I didn't do it. You know, I came home and she didn't do it. Man, she did that to me, man. I didn't, man. To be in the I didn't want that bitch in here, man. I didn't want no fucking kids. Fuck that bitch, man. <laughs> Yes, I want to fuck. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> it's your but, idea. It's your goddamn idea. I'm proud of this bitch up in there. But, you know, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, here's the thing. I'll start over with this. Uh, the thing with, with this movie is that the foreshadowing in this is horrible. They might as well put the camera on something and put a put a pop up bubble telling you exactly what's about to little follow. Animated hands and points. Yeah, a little arrow point. Hey, you know what's gonna happen here? Oh, guns. Yeah, they pass <laughs> a, a rack. They pass a rack of guns, and you say, you know what? Oh yeah, guess what? You know this is gonna come in near the end. They pass a knife rack. They like, you know, one of these knives gonna be missing. They pass a cat. They're like, you know, this motherfucker's dead. <laughs> it's and if y'all yell spoiler, fuck you. All right, she kills the cat. I ain't saying nothing. I don't spoil nothing. Because that's, <laughs> that's straight out of Fatal Attraction. Man, some, yeah, they put man, they put a camera too many times on this cat. And it's like, this cat is not that fucking important for you to be uh, spotlighting him like that. That cat is dead. <laughs> I mean, they, they really do. That cat should have been wearing a sandwich boy saying, my ass is gone. <laughs> Star Trek red shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This shit right here, man, the, the, that's what makes the writing so bad here. That's what makes this feel like it's written by some high school student. Because they, you know, they, what's up? Did she make a YouTube video of herself? She's sending him videos over the internet saying he's getting them at work. I mean, and here's, and here's the funny thing about it. Here's some, of the, here's some of the things about this where it makes no sense. Like, when the, first of all, he, when things start getting weird, not when they get bad, when they start getting weird, he has somebody go out and uh, do some uh, reconnaissance on her, get some information. Michael K. Williams okay. is in the movie. And He's they, everywhere. Yeah, that dude works. And she had, and he put his ass to work and had him go find some information on, on her. And it, shit, you know, we know what comes back. I mean, it's pretty much just one page that said, bitch is crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? And you're thinking, like, well, why didn't you do this background check before mm. early in the movie when you, didn't, when you had doubts about her? Because he did, and I'll tell you about that in a little while. But the other thing is that... The report comes back and saying she is an insane killer. She has done this before. She's gotten off with some technicality, but she's crazy and she's dangerous. And he still keeps her ass in the house. Why? Because, well, I don't want to ruin my wife's happiness. No, you just want to fuck. That's all it is. That's what it is. I mean, it's, it, I have no <laughs> other answer for that, so I just made up my own right now. <laughs> this shit is stupid. And, and, and you know what? And, and that's the other thing about this, man. They have moments. They have moments where they can they can actually uh, go in and give a little bit of surprise. They can't even do that. There's a dude in the movie. He looks like a he looks like an angry Hispanic Adam Sandler. And, okay. <laughs> and this dude right here, the beginning of the film, he's weird and gets crazy as it goes along. I mean, signals should have been going off from the very beginning. They wait till the shit gets crazy for my uh, Morris Chestnut to come in and start handling things. But if you ever come near Anna again, I'm gonna bust your head open. Then I'm gonna make sure your punk ass is sent somewhere that's gonna make the Middle East look like Club Med. Wow. He even sounds like Adam Sandler, man, just by one wow. Cancer. Happy Hanukkah, see your hooters. <laughs> <laughs> this, the, the, they, they have a scene early on where they could have actually, you see him in jail right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say what he did, but you see him in jail right now. 
and they had a early they had a scene early on where they could have made him look like a nice guy and save that for a surprise. But immediately when we introduce this guy, at first for about a second, he's cool yeah. talking about his family. Then he goes outside. He says, "Hey, uh, Morris, can I go out and smoke?" And Morris goes out there with him. He's like. <laughs> Yeah, man, you know, I do windows and shit, and, you know, I look at women while they're undressing. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, they, they want it, man. Why? <laughs> you know, they and they don't bother to do any background check on either one of them to think, like, maybe something's going on here. Maybe they're in cahoots together. Maybe this guy's going to ruin uh, this, he's going to uh, abuse this girl, and she's, they're going to ruin the chances of, ha- uh, chances of us having this baby. There, there, there are things in here that they could have done to actually make simple things to bring in an element of surprise, but they fuck that up too. They they shoot these movies well. They shoot these movies, look, this movie is cheap. I think this movie costs about $10 million. And they know how to make the most out of their money. I can't say that they sh- they know how to go to locations to shoot. Like mm-hmm. they do, this, is, this takes place in New Orleans. They know oh, how yeah. to go to houses and shoot like the nicest homes so that the cinematography catches all the modern, you know, uh, uh, lighting and all the modern architecture yeah. and all the sleekness that looks good under the right lighting. Uh-huh, and, uh-huh. you know, they, they, they make the most out of their budgets with these films. And they make a profit on them, too, so I can give them that. But this is, this is a BET Lifetime co-production right here. And I actually kind of liked it. I ain't going to lie. I actually had fun with this shit. I had fun with this. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was laughing so hard in this. I had the, look, I had the black experience there. I'd say these women should have been at church. They brought church here because everything that was going on, like, mm, girl, ooh, you know, all that shit going on. So do you on. feel like you could watch No Good Deeds? And the perfect guy, and this all in a triple feature. Man, I I don't know what it is, but I had I did, you know me I had to play the snobby critic, but I'm going back and looking at these, and I'm like, I had to look at why I didn't I, I didn't enjoy the first two movies. Mm-hmm. The first the that movie uh with Idris Elba, uh No Good Deed, I was just in Waco and upset because I was like you know I just saw this movie at my mama's house you know I went, <laughs> right, right, and now right. I'm paying for it to see it at the screen. You know, when I say that I just saw it, I saw, you know, Lifetime shows these movies all the time. I right. just saw the white version of it. Mm-hmm. And then we watched Medea, you know, and that's like, hey, you put those two together, <laughs> you got you got this fucking movie right here. Yeah, just add one fever. Yeah, you know, the only thing that was missing, see, that's the thing about it. Watching No Good Deed was like watching a Tyler Perry movie with no Medea. Uh-huh. I had the angry mm-hmm. black dude that, you know, the, uh, the those you know that black dude that Tyler Perry always hates. The right. villainous, uh, the dark skinned black the, dude. The dark skinned, woman killing black dude. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I, 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 that's why I didn't like that. Uh, this movie, The Perfect Guy, the reason why I was mad at that is because I had to go to two theaters to escape ignorant people. That's the movie I saw where the woman was filming the film. Was, she, was, she was like recording with her phone the movie. And I had to go tell the usher to like stop her. And the usher went to the wrong person and even <laughs> give a fuck about her. All that. You make sure you report this felony if you see it. I did my good duty. <laughs> And they didn't do shit about what it. What happened when he went to the wrong person? He left. She, oh, okay. It was a woman that said she was. She happened to be texting too. It was a theater full of black people who were doing everything but watching the movie. <laughs> they were taping the film, texting the movie. They weren't even watching. They were like, "Ooh, girl, I'm watching this movie right now." Well, well, fucking watch it then. <laughs> they were doing everything but watching the fucking movie. But this right here, I just happened to be in a theater where the black people they were only loud when they actually added to the movie. Uh-huh. I was. It was quiet. I was having a good time. I just ate breakfast too. You know, I was. <laughs> It was a fun experience. Look, out of my, out of good conscience, and the, oh, and the things, and it's so funny. The things, that, the limits that they go to to protect this, uh, this baby because she's on the last embryo. Uh-huh. I mean, they do some nonsensical shit to protect this, to protect that baby, which means they got to keep the, this, this crazy chick alive, and you know they got it, and, and they have to sacrifice not only their marriage and you know their livelihood, but their lives too. This woman's, she gonna kill somebody. They ain't know it. And they're like, oh, we gotta protect the baby. This is some of the dumbest shit that I've seen, but I had a great time with it. But out of good conscience, I I cannot. I cannot give this <laughs> I anything. I don't know where you're gonna land on this. No, I can I mean I've had a great time and it's personal, but out of just out of just respect for filmmaking in general, I can't give this nothing more than a bullshit. But it's some good <laughs> bullshit. It is some of the best bullshit you can buy. Martin. So will this go on your best of the worst? It, that's a good question, Martin. That is a good... No, hell no, it ain't going on my best of. And you know what? It ain't going on my worst of. It's going to go into Corey's private guilty pleasures. Well, that's like, what I mean. Like, yeah. like best worst movies. Yeah, it'll go in and like, if you want to see some... If you want to see some good black foolishness, if you know what? Right? Even go watch this movie. It's like... Because it, when I say black foolishness, it's not... You're not going to see Marlon Wayans shit where people are cooning it up. Uh-huh. You're just watching good professional looking black folks... Do who, stupid who shit. Who just happen to be doing some stupid shit. Okay. 
I want to help. Look, I want to help my people. I want to help black folks, but I just this can't is not do the it. way. But this is not the one. This is not the way to do it. This is some straight up bullshit. And you know, and like I said, if I can give this the best bullshit that I can, then so be it. That's what this is. Uh, you know, wait for this shit to come on Lifetime R B E T. <laughs> you'll you'll be just fine. So not even rental. No, not no. even rental. No, wait for that shit to pop on TV. Watch it like I do. When you go to your mama's house and it's on and you get caught up in it. That's the way you watch it. Or like I say, pull out a box of crayons and write your own fucking script. That could probably sell. I mean, somebody sold this bullshit right here. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. I did. I had a good time. I actually had a real good time. I thought I was going to be walking out the TV looking like that. <laughs> Gamefly brings to your house, to you, over 8,000 new releases and classics that are available to rent or you can buy them for almost every system out there, current and some old systems. Like I said, man, I've been trying to put my GameCube back to work for years. Gamefly is giving me an excuse to do that. And you can even try 30 days for free by typing in GameflyOffer.com forward slash double toasted. And when you do that, you'll get 30 days for free of games and movies. Get all those things, all of them at once. Just stay in the house. Don't go nowhere because they're all going to get brought right to your mailbox. You can also bring the element of surprise every month to your home in the form of a Loot Crate mystery box. In that box, I can't tell you what it is, but I can guarantee you it is the best in geek and gaming gear. Some people say it's like having Comic-Con brought right to your home. You don't have to leave the house for nothing. You're getting all kind of stuff. And everybody likes a little surprise every month. Just a little bit. And here's another surprise for you. You know, if you go to our link, trylootcrate.com forward slash double toasted, and you type in bridge... 10, that's the word bridge in the l- l- number 10. You can get 10% off, a, di- a 10% discount on your first crate. How's that for a surprise right there? Loot Crate, bring the mystery and the surprise to your mailbox once a month with Loot Crate. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel and go over to our home, doubletoasted.com for more videos and live streams. And remember, stay toasty.